It's time for South Sudan Safari. Welcome to South Sudan Safari, a program that brings all South Sudanese together. I am Pitya Suleiman. Coming up in this edition of South Sudan Safari, we shall be looking at the origin and the tradition of the Hojulu people of Central Equatoria State. South Sudan Safari talked to the paramount chief of the Pojulu people about the origin and the tradition of the Pojulu. This is what will be coming to you shortly. Please don't go away. The Pojulu tribe of Central Equatoria State is one of the Bari speaking groups found in Lanya County and East Fire. But one may wonder as from where did these Pojulu people originate? To trace their origin, South Sudan Safari spoke to Inosa Lakiona, the paramount chief of the Pojulu people, and first asked him to introduce himself to Rutong listeners. Hi, it's me, Inosa Lakiona, and I host Sultan. My name is Inosa Lakiona, the paramount chief of the Pojulu people of Lanya County. I took up this responsibility in 1983. Up to now, I'm still leading as the paramount chief of the Pojulu people. Thank you very much, Mr. Chief. Could you please tell us where did the name Pojulu originate from? And where did these people actually come from? I Gabila Petra Pojulu fi Ethiopia. The Pojulu tribe came from Ethiopia. There were some people called Julu in Ethiopia there. This is the place where the Pojulu tribe originated from. All of us, the Pojulu plus the Kakwa, but we left the Bari tribe across the Nile, so we came up to the one of the mountains called Kumbri. This is the place where the Pojulu ended and Kakwa proceeded ahead. The Pojulu came from Julu, one of their leaders. Also, Mr. Chief would like to know from you, are there some small sub-tribes in the Pojulu tribe, or they are just one, or it's just one tribe called Pojulu? I, Pojulu, woman can come at Salatin. Pojulu. Pitanin, come on, Pojulu. The Pojulu were five chiefs. These were the tribes of the Pojulu. And also, there are some other Pojulus in some parts of Lanya County. We have one of the chiefs of Pojulu also who lives in that place. We begin from that place. From that place, they were united or put together with the Nyangwara tribe. But for us, we are here in Lanya, Kenya, Mukaya, Payam, Kopera, Uji, and Wanduruba, Payam. These are the places where the Pojulu tribes live. We don't have other people outside the Pojulu community. Also, during the liberation time, there were so many people who came in. When they saw that the Pojulu people are welcoming people, they felt that they should come and settle in this place. We don't separate people. We look at everyone as brothers and sisters. The Pojulu tribe, they love all people. They look at somebody as his or her brother. This is what is taking place here in the Pojulu. We don't fight among ourselves. We stay in love, in peace. We don't raid people of their property. Also in Pojulu tribe, we marry from other or different tribes. Also some people are free to marry our daughters. We don't have the restriction that our daughters should be only married by the Pojulu men. But if the girl gets somebody outside, she's free to marry. Now, we'd like to know from you in the Pojulu tradition, during the marriage ceremony, what type or kind of dowry do you demand from, from your in-laws? Now, we'd like to know from you in the Pojulu tradition, during the marriage ceremony, what type or kind of dowry do you demand from, from your in-laws? Yes, uh, during those days before 
the invention of money, okay. people used to marry and paying gods, spears, and holes. These were the things that our grandfathers used to marry. When you are demanding for a dowry, you ask for those things. If that man happened to be having some cows, he would be also asked to pay, and also would be requested to bring spears. But currently, as people are using money, most people prefer paying cash compared to any other things like animals. That's why currently, these things are not existing. But people normally ask for gods for the purpose of traditional rituals. But currently, as people have money, people used to marry by paying money. Sir, also would like to know from you during the marriage ceremony. Who are the key leading people who are very important in organizing the marriage ceremony? During the marriage ceremonies, people would be called and they would sit down. And then very important people would be selected. These people will be entrusted with very strong words to argue and discuss with their in-laws. The dowry that would be demanded, then from there, if that person doesn't have a lot of things or enough money or animals, he would be given the girl. Then after that, he would be paying the rest of the dowry in installment. But the parents of the girl would not refuse giving him their daughter. I would like to know from you during those days of your grandparents, in case a man happened to defile somebody's daughter, what kind of find were you people asking or demanding for? Yes, during those days when a man defiles somebody's daughter, he would be asked to pay seven gods those days. Seven gods would be paid as a fine. But currently, if somebody defiles somebody's daughter, he would be taken to the court and be fined. He would be fine to pay other things. Also, he would be in prison. Now, such a culprit, no matter how many months do you charge that person to be in prison? This imprisonment depends on the case. Sometimes it is six months to nine months. But that person would be fined 600 to 750 Sudanese pounds if that is somebody's wife. But if that is a girl who hasn't yet got married, he would be fined 500 Sudanese pounds. So that it would not bring problem between the person who committed adultery and the husband of that woman. Would you please tell us how do you name or give names to your children? And who are the people who are always charged with that duty of giving names to the children in the Pojulu tribe? If a baby is born, for example, like today, then all the family members would be called, porridge would be cooked, food would be prepared, and then that woman or the mother who gave birth would be taken inside. Till when the umbilical cord gets dry, then very thick beans would be cooked, and then cooking oil would be taken. A tradition or cultural ritual would be performed. And then people would say that, let this kid not be a fool or let him not be a dull person. Then he would be given a traditional name. Most names are for the elders or for the grandparents. And then from there, that kid would be brought out, food would be prepared, most people would be invited, and his or her birthday would be celebrated. And then the name would be given to him. In the other side also, church members or people from the church would be called so that that kid would be given a Christian name. Do you normally give names just like that or you give a meaningful names? We normally give a meaningful names. As I have mentioned earlier, that that kid would be named after their grandparents. If there is somebody who lived before and his character was very good, then that child would be given the name of the lead. But sometimes there's some other situation if a woman happened to abort for several times, and then that kid would be given a name 
according to the children that the woman or the mother has aborted. Mr. Enosalak Yona, the paramount chief of the Pojul, also said that the Pojul people are agriculturalists and businessmen and women. Uh, the economic activities of the Pojul people, they are agriculturalists. They like farming so much. They do cultivate and also they do carry out business activities. For example, if you see in Juba and Ye, there are so many Pojulu boys who like trading. They love also cultivation. They like also looking after gods. And there are few of them who also trade in kettles to go and sell them to other places. These are the main activities that the Pojulu are doing. The Pojulu were the one feeding actually most of these places. For example, Pojulu of Lanya, Kakua in Ye, these are agriculturalists since those days up to now. These are the things that the Pojulu love so much. The Pojulu community also have a form of democratic society where people have the rights to choose and elect their chiefs who will lead, defend, and be the spokesperson for the whole community. Hey, Sultan Kanaoju Gairu will be a use Nasi Beginite. If a chief needs to be changed or if he or she becomes old, people would sit down and there a degree would be issued that we need a new chief who would replace the late chief or somebody who has become old. This message would be passed to all the families around and people would come and sit down. They would discuss and choose somebody whom they see that is well behaved, very strong and respect people to become a chief. But those days, if a chief happened to die, his son would be chosen to become a chief. But now as people have become educated that this thing is totally wrong. Maybe the son of the chief might be having a bad character. Maybe his behavior is not good. We would not put him to lead the community. The family members would sit down and would see somebody whom they believe in him and trust him that he would lead the community. If there are some people in that family, two or three or four, they would sit down and they would carry out the election. The person who would pass through would be given that responsibility. Now I would like to know in the tribe of Pojulu, do you people also allow other people, for example, like the Kakua, to come and rule the Pojulu tribe here, or it is not there? This is something that I haven't yet seen, because the Pojulu people, they want to be ruled by the Pojulu. Not that somebody should be brought from somewhere to come and roll the Pojul. They would not accept that. This is what I've never seen here. Mr. Chief, I would like to know from you also, in case for some, in case a chief happened to die, what other traditional activities are being carried out before that person is buried? And how is that chief going to be buried? Hey, Sultan de Kanmutu. If a chief died, all people would be very sorry. All people would come from different families. They would gather and they would mourn that chief for two to three days before he is being buried. And then from there, if there happened to be a firstborn in this family, for example, the firstborn, he will be chosen that your father has passed away. You should look after his family very well. And sometimes, if a chief happened to leave somebody in this family who can be able to lead people, then from there, the family members would sit down and discuss in a lovely way, without quarrel, without fight. Elders would sit down and say that, now we need somebody's son to be the one to replace this chief who has died. And then from there, the elders would sit down and decide that the chief has left somebody in this family. He will be in charge of this family, taking care of all these family members. This is what I've seen here. Mr. Chief, as we approach the end of this program, 
I would like to know from you, how do you compare the past Fojilo traditions with the current generation? How do you compare it? Are there changes or the old version still exist? I akalat pita zaman ukita hasa ogota gaira. The past Fojilo tradition and the current one has changed. The children of these days, they don't listen to the elders, but there are only few of them who listen to the advice of their parents. They move in howling. They do whatever they want to do. They drink alcohol, they smoke opium, they chew the cud. You can see that children who have never reached 25 or 50 years, they are already old. It is because of being indisciplined. That's why I've seen that there are a lot of changes when you look in the past and the current generation. That's why we're requesting if the church members can come in and try to teach and try to bring in these children, it will help. If not, this will bring in a lot of criminal cases, a lot of theft. This would not make the nation to develop. Without us, this nation will not develop. It is us to develop and work hard to develop this nation. If you in your family, you have to stay in a good behaviors, you have to practice your tradition so as to develop and to build this nation. That's why when I compare the past with the present, there is big change. Most people have gone to other different places like Uganda, Kenya, Khartoum. They brought different characters and behaviors here in this community. That's why they cannot listen and respect their parents. What is your message to all the Pojulu tribe, the community who are listening to you right now on this radio about the importance of the Pojulu traditions, culture, and behavior? My message to all the youth is that Soon we are going to get our independence. When we receive our independence, it is going to be under the responsibility of the youth. Youth should change their behaviors. They should adapt and build good characters. They are the future leaders. This government belongs to the youth. Like for us who are elders who have grown up now, we have reached 50 to 60 years. This is not our government, but this government belongs to the youth. Youth should leave this criminal act. They should leave chewing the card, which sometimes may destroy your lives. They are the foundation. If now they start destroying, spoiling their future, how are they going to manage their families? They would not manage their families. What would that mean? That means this nation is going to collapse. But we need youth to be strong, to bring new development in this nation, to bring new characters, new behaviors, and good tradition. Without this I think this nation will not go ahead. My message to my children, boys and girls, they should listen very well to this message. We should have a proper method, proper behaviors. We should listen and understand each other. Even though you are an orphan, you should look at somebody's father as your parents. If you are there, this person should talk to you just the same way as you are talking to your children. That person would be the first and best person far better than the, those who have their parents. Therefore, this is my message to all the children who are growing the current generation, is that we should change our thoughts, our behaviors, so that our nation will go ahead. As we close this program, can you please just Pass your greetings and message to all the Pojulu elders, the chiefs, and the youth, and all those who are listening to you outside there in the Pojulu language. I, in a Roman, ko ta sabab, mwajika nkadure. Na Roman kota, adi, tingun be kota, kita be alopur, kita gaire gaire muko kazu, gaire ta gaire akala kazu, inge ta inko munyi, inge ta injulin kazu, Nangati tinda risala nyo isala tin Kastan kang ti greta ye ili Ti tikita ye nikang inyarju 
yani ko nya nyar berik di sekri nenengo narong bay na popo kangi ju lakin ko ima man berik mana wa murijin na be kata belet bay durjo nena nana lengon yi roman ke gak mata ki kan ki so duye ko ti juba ko ko ti ki mun ebbe bora yi kilo mandu yu me na ro li kan luduga lokon ya je gubon yi man ju miri ni kan na goni ka je ngo dara kata yi na mere yi lo gburun ni na miri nena ti ge a lo put a nyen yi feti tutur yi ngerot a yi memet ni na miri de ngon da golong ada tutut bora wole bay tutut bora a nyen yi ri yi ko ngaji kan ay sasar ngaji kan ko akhlak la galo ut ti nyare nyare jeran ti nyare nyare monye ju ti nyare nyare ayangutu la gay fi ko yi ben ngutu la ga jujumbu manju na marteki fa ngina risala nyu na ganan ni nyukin eta ngam keti roman ko ngutu ti radio yin kade kade na kon kata tila tanga itingi rot ikita anyen jurlo du durjo that was mr enosa lakiona the permanent chief of the pojulu people talking to south sudan safari with that we have come to the end of our today's program until then it is by from me pts suliman loro and all the gutung ready team would like to say thank you for listening meet you next time program was produced by Pitya Suleiman Loro, supervised by Amos David Lokosang, and directed by Jacob J. Akol. <laughs> South Sudan Safari is a series of Gurtung Radio. The Gurtung Radio magazine and website are supported by the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the support from the people of Norway and the Open Society Network Media of East Africa.